Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I haven't done one of my behind the scenes videos in a while, and I know a lot of you are often interested in how I uh, make stuff work here on the channel, because as you know, I don't have a crew. I do everything by myself, including when I do an interview, uh, all of the uh, technical intricacies of getting a Skype call to work uh, properly for both streaming and uh, later recording and re-uploading to YouTube. It can be quite daunting, and I've been perfecting this over the years, and I wanted to kind of show you how I'm doing it. So right now, I'm using a TriCaster Mini as my uh, production switcher. So I have a live switcher here in the camera so I can switch cameras whenever I want like that. I use that when I do the reviews and I also do it of course when I conduct interviews. What's nice about the TriCaster is that uh, it's got a lot of advanced technology in it that makes me, allows me to do a lot of uh, real-time stuff. So for example I can have you know like a two-up window like this when we're talking to somebody on the air. Uh, two separate video sources going at the same time. In fact you can have I think three or four different things uh, running simultaneously on the screen depending on how you configure everything. So really advanced workflow. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about is actually very similar to what I was doing with the, um, the older production equipment I was using also. So you can kind of get a feel for uh, exactly how to route things and make it work uh, when you're trying to do an interview yourself. Now this works for one caller. I haven't really gotten into doing more callers simultaneously. So this is probably uh, good if you're, for like a one-on-one -on -one interview, but if you're doing a panel discussion, uh, the complexity will build over time because there are some uh, things you have to think about, especially related to routing audio. But let me get into uh, how I do everything. So the caller comes in uh, via a MacBook here. This is a MacBook Air. This is an i5 based MacBook Air. Pretty, uh, you know, not, not the most powerful computer in the world, but it does Skype perfectly. And that's why I use it for these purposes. This one tends to stay on my desk now. This used to be my travel machine, but I bought the new MacBooks. So now this one is kind of like assigned to uh, the production desk here. So this is what I use a lot of my production, uh, you know, screen captures and stuff with. I have a single Thunderbolt cable coming out of it. This is going over to a Belkin Thunderbolt dock. And that dock has Ethernet built in as well as uh, the ability to shoot video out. So what's happening is, is that uh, this Thunderbolt port, this thing, single port is pushing out audio uh, from the Mac, video from the Mac, uh, and is also doing uh, Ethernet back and forth. So I've got a single cable that does all of that. Very convenient to have it all flowing through one port with one cable. So that's nice and it works very well. So the data, uh, video, and audio are coming out of there. And then I've got a Magwell uh, HDMI capture device I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a few minutes. But that is where uh, the caller calls into the video and the audio come out of here and then go into the TriCast. So let me pull up what my TriCaster uh, workflow looks like here. So you've got, this, this looks very confusing, but I'm going to kind of step through things. So just follow my mouse cursor as I'm going here. So I want to talk about audio briefly because um, this is an important thing because you want to be able to uh, hear your caller and also have your caller hear you, uh, but you don't want your caller to hear themselves. Remember, all the audio is going into this TriCaster box, and uh, what's happening is, is that when we're having a conversation, they need to be able to hear me, and that is a, a critical component of the whole mix. So what I'm doing on the TriCaster is uh, having the audio coming into Audio 3 here, which is coming in via HDMI, technically, uh, and uh, I, it's a long story, but it comes in via HDMI after it gets out of that Thunderbolt dock. And you'll note here that I have the master audio button checked off uh, but I don't have this aux one box checked. And this is important because what happens is on my audio, which is coming in over my mic here, see? Um, what I've got is uh, that aux one checked off. And what that does is uh, it basically creates like two buses of audio. So we have the master audio, which mixes my voice as well as the voice of the caller into the recording and over to the stream. Uh, but we also have another separate stream that just takes my audio and puts it back out to something. And uh, that something is uh, the Magwell device that is on the desk here. So the TriCaster has two HDMI outputs on it. So I have one output that goes into my Blackmagic recorder that's here on the desk that I uh, usually record all of my productions to. Uh, the other output is going into, at least for the purposes of interviews, uh, to this little device. And what this does is it takes the HDMI in and then spits audio and video out to the MacBook so that uh, my Skype caller can see and hear me. And so I'm running everything through the TriCaster and this thing makes the computer think it's just another webcam. So this is the only product, and I've reviewed this, so you can see my review of it. Uh, this is the only product that I've seen that can actually do what I'm describing, basically act as a webcam. There's a bunch of stuff that I've looked at in the past from like Blackmagic and others, but Skype doesn't like any of that stuff. The only thing that I found that Skype likes for an HDMI ingest device is this thing, and it works great. It's about $300, so it's not inexpensive, but it works, and sometimes when things work they're worth paying for uh, and I want to show you how I'm routing the audio out of here so we're gonna pull up a wacky screen here so uh, when I go over to the corner box here on the program 
uh, window, there's a gear that will appear when my mouse runs over it. And uh, what I've got here are some options for how I want to output things. So, uh, for example, on my video and, uh, and uh, audio for the uh, connection one, which is going to my recorder, I have it shooting program video out, which means that uh, whatever is live outputting right now is what's going to appear over program. So when I'm switching cameras back and forth, basically what you're watching is program uh, in TriCaster speak. So that is going out there. And you'll also notice that the audio output here is master as well as uh, one and two, so master one and two. So what that means is that uh, the master audio, uh, basically everything in that uh, audio section that we were just looking at that is checked off master is going to come out over the master. So we see we've got master one checked off uh, on here. And if we go over to my audio, uh, even though I have aux one selected, master is also coming out over there. But if we go back over to our setting here, uh, we don't want the caller that is on the Skype call on the computer to hear um, their own audio. So, you know, just outputting uh, the, the master program back to the caller is going to hear them echoing back on themselves. They, it's not going to work. We don't want them to do that because it's going to distract them and, of course, make it impossible for them to communicate. So, uh, for the second output, which is going into that Magwell adapter, I have it outputting the aux, num the aux audio here. And right now, the only thing on aux is my audio. So, you can see that the uh, on the Mac here that my uh, audio is going up and down as I'm speaking because that is receiving audio from uh, the TriCaster over that aux thing there. And what's also cool is that I can decide what uh, that auxiliary um, output sees. So I could even do switching of cameras here separate from the main program camera over that second output. I did um, a video talking about how I did my Raspberry Pi review earlier where I had uh, both the old one and the new one on a monitor on my desk. And that was another thing that I was able to do because uh, you can switch each of these outputs on the TriCaster independently, which is really cool. So what I'm doing in this instance is just having it locked to camera one, but I could set up a macro uh, where I could live switch on that too. So in the inst if, I, if, for example, I wanted to maybe show the call or a picture that I'm talking about or a video that I'm talking about, I can route those things uh, separately through that output, which is pretty cool. We also have some settings here for the stream. So uh, what I do is just have it follow um, one, but I could even have uh, the stream actually work off of a separate uh, switch also. So you've got the ability to do a lot of different kinds of switching here. And I can even uh, broadcast this over my network via uh, RTMP as well. So um, there's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of options here. But uh, basically what we're doing though is uh, just having the second output on the TriCaster uh, lock into camera one as well as lock onto my audio uh, so they can hear me but not themselves. And that is how uh, all of that works. And then so that I can hear everything, I've got this analog audio cable running out from the TriCaster. So the TriCaster has an analog audio output. I just run this long extension cable and then plug a pair of headphones into uh, the jack here so that I can hear both my voice as well as that of the caller. So then when I get the caller on the line, I got a couple of things I need to set up on the video side to get everything working uh, the way that you see it on the channel. So let me show you just how the TriCaster works so you have an understanding as to what goes on. So up here uh, is all of the video inputs coming in. So the TriCaster has four uh, physical video inputs, at least this one that I have, the TriCaster Mini. So these are uh, you know, HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then on the next row, we've got uh, network inputs. So I could have uh, things coming in from computers and other devices on my network right now. Nothing is uh, connected. I actually prefer to plug my computers in directly, especially for Skype, because it gives, uh, you know, just gives you a much better uh, lip sync ratio. And also the video runs a little bit faster. But, you know, things like PowerPoint and just kind of static graphics often work well over these network inputs. Uh, right here is DDR1. So there are actually two of these DDRs, which are basically media players. So what you do is you can import uh, video footage of any length, as long as it fits on the hard drive, and have those play back as inputs. And basically the way the TriCaster works is that it assumes everything's a virtual camera, whether it's a real camera or not. So these video inputs here, uh, these, these uh, video playback devices here are uh, considered cameras because I can even switch over to my uh, little two up here and you can see that this uh, looped recording is simulating my caller right now. So he's just in there uh, kind of looping around and he's working the same as a camera would, the same as a computer plugged into one of those hard inputs. It's just uh, the way this works, which is pretty cool. And I also have my uh, little background running here, which you'll see in a minute when I show you some other stuff. So uh, pretty cool how all this kind of comes together. And you'll see, of course, on our two up display right now is that he's not really centered all that well. So one of the first things I do once my caller gets onto the Skype, uh, I go in and adjust things slightly. So uh, up on the top here is 
a way to adjust what are called the virtual inputs. So you see this kind of looks the same, but this is actually uh, uh, configuring all of my different virtual inputs. And what the virtual inputs are, uh, are ways to kind of mash up all these other inputs that we just talked about uh, into things that are more, uh, you know, more produced looking, you know, I guess is the best way to describe it. So for example, this two up box here uh, is a virtual input that consists of this background uh, and two of whatever input sources I have uh, running at the same time. So right now we're seeing on uh, ME1, which is what we're configured at, that he's really not centered all that well. Uh, so you can see he's on the second row here because DDR2 is what's playing and that's him in there uh, playing back. So what we're gonna do is go click here and I can just reposition him a little bit, uh, get him situated better. I can even scale and zoom him in a little bit. This is not always the best thing to do because you're only gonna have so much resolution to work with, but I uh, do have the ability to do that. So we can get him centered the way we want him in there. And now uh, if we go back to that, you can see now he's looking a lot better. I might not need to adjust myself a little bit to get myself uh, better position. So I could physically move because I'm in front of the camera or I can actually move me uh, with the uh, position setting here too. So I can do that. Another thing that I like to do is because a lot of times uh, people who are watching the interview want to know who I'm talking to. So uh, on ME2, what I can do here, let me go switch up to the configuration there. I'm going to put him up on there by himself too. So let me go do that real quick. Let's go DDR2. There we go. Um, so this is the full screen version of him. So you see when I'm doing one of these interviews, I'm often going from uh, this uh, screen here where we're talking to him and then we have him up uh, on his own like that. Uh, but you might want to know who we're talking to, right? So uh, there is a way to make that happen also. So one of the other things you can do in addition to having these uh, video playbacks going on is you also have uh, two graphics uh, options as well. So I can go over here to my GFX tab and we've got uh, a little um, graphic that we can put up under our guy here. So let me go switch on his in preview, uh, the preview side here, so you can see him talking there. Uh, and you can see if I go and just click on this little take icon here, uh, we have a graphic up and I can change that any which way I want. I think this guy, the, uh, this is one of the sample files that came from the TriCaster. So I think his name is Rex. So we'll call him Rex. And then we'll say he's with uh, the TriCaster. So I'll click down below here and say TriCaster. Oops, let me get, I didn't get on there, right? Let me just do that again, here we go. Um, so I'll just do some adjustments to the text here. I never type well when I'm recording live for some reason. So now we've got that changed. Uh, when I close that, you can see it's updating it in real time. So what that is on though, is on one of these virtual inputs. So what I'm mashing up here uh, is just him full screen along with uh, the graphic that I set up in this keyer right here. So I can take that on and off. And the reason why I'm doing it in a virtual input versus down here is, be, let me turn it off here and I'll show you why. Um, because these two inputs down here, these two keys uh, are over everything. So if I take it here, you can see now it's even showing up on uh, the uh, on the on, on the preview screen we're looking at here as well as on my video also because uh, these uh, these two keys are basically on top of everything you're doing uh, versus this one which lives inside of that input so as you can see when I'm turning it on here if you look in the me2 window there uh, you'll see it popping up in the preview but not while uh, we're doing this and then if I uh, call up his his thing it will always be tied to that now what's really cool though is that I can um, I can also just have this kind of go back and forth so if I uh, go over to our uh, regular DDR2 there. I'm switching back and forth now, but uh, we're not seeing uh, anything change but the graphics. So that just gives you an idea of the power of these virtual inputs on the TriCaster. And there's a lot you can do with these. I'm just scratching the surface, but uh, there's just some really cool stuff that you can do. Get everything set up the way you want it to do. Maybe two or three video windows running at the same time. Then you can switch to those just like you would uh, any other camera, which is really cool. And that's what I do with these interviews is I like to have, uh, you know, have that graphic come up and not have to really push a lot of buttons to do it. So I usually just call up that uh, second ME to do that. And then when I want our two up uh, back here, I can do that. I can have my camera up like this. I can also uh, have uh, the caller's camera up, which would usually be my Skype window here too. So uh, lots of options for how all of those calls get, uh, get done on these things. Now for streaming, what I do uh, is I just download a file from YouTube Live. They have these pre-configured uh, little files you download. There is, some, there is a little bit of work that you have to do with the TriCaster initially to get it ready for streaming. But once you do that once, I'll link to it as a white paper, uh, you're all set to go. You just have to download this configuration file from YouTube Live. Uh, just uh, in input it into your TriCaster, and then all you've got to do 
uh, is hit the stream button up here and it will immediately start uh, streaming over to YouTube Live directly. So the TriCaster, in addition to doing all the things that you're seeing, is also able to, without any lag or slowdown or anything else like that, uh, stream it back out to streaming services. In fact, they've got a new update available that uh, will even do multiple streaming services simultaneously. So it's got a lot of power under the hood. Uh, you can also record things live uh, at the same time. So for example, I just hit the record button here and I can record onto the TriCaster's hard disk. And I usually do that because I like, to, especially when I do an interview, you know, like when I do my uh, product reviews, I'm often shooting a segment of that review, playing it back to make sure it looks okay and then continuing. So I have a pretty good, um, you know, a degree of, of certainty that my recording that I'm doing onto my uh, Blackmagic device here is going to be uh, working just fine on those reviews. But when I do an interview where I'm, maybe I got somebody who's, you know, pretty important and doesn't have time to redo a 45 minute interview after we did it, I like to make sure that I have multiple recordings. So I have the Blackmagic external recorder recording. I also have uh, my TriCaster itself recording at the same time and we're streaming over to YouTube which is also recording. So somewhere along the way I'll have uh, three workable recordings if, if, if everything goes right. Uh, if things go wrong I'll at least have two different backups to be able to do all of that and uh, that's one of the nice things about working with the TriCaster is that it gives you an additional recording option too as well as the ability to stream and do everything out of a single box. So that is how uh, I do interviews. It's pretty, it's actually pretty easy to set up now because all the settings that you just saw in here I'm able to save as a file on the TriCaster so I can say alright I'm doing an interview today uh, let me load up the interview profile and I can get started with that. Um, and then I have a separate profile for doing my reviews and then the weekly wrap up has its own profile because um, those virtual inputs, you know, once you change things, you don't want to uh, you have to keep setting them up every time. So what I'm able to do when I load up my interviews is that uh, ME1 is set to this automatically, ME2 has got that going automatically, and then uh, when I switch over to a different profile, like my weekly wrap-up profile, uh, ME1 has that, uh, that logo thing running in the loop uh, next to me, uh, and that's already configured on that file. So really easy to switch between different types of things that I do here uh, on the channel. So that is how I do these interviews on my TriCaster. I'd love to hear more from you if you have some uh, things that you'd like to see in my behind the scenes series. So do let me know. Always happy to uh, try to do a few of these when I have some time. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.